Okay, good morning, Bokatov, everybody. Welcome back. After the Chagim is here, hard to believe, but it has actually arrived. And uh, here we go. We're, we're back. We are in Masechet Beitza. We're in the second parak. We ended up on a Mishnah, so it's a good place to uh, good place to start. We're on Daf Yud Zayin Amud Bet at the bottom of the page. Yud Zayin Amud Bet at the bottom, and we have a Mishnah which is uh, a little bit complicated, dealing with a lot of um, things to do with uh, mikveh and tefillah, and tefillah kalim, and a lot of uh, not obscure, but some 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 difficult concepts. But let's uh, let's get into it. You remember that we're going through, really throughout the Masechet, through the Mishnayot, different machlokot between Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel, primarily related to Yom Tov, related to other things as well. This is related to Yom Tov. And the Mishnah says like this. It says, Chal liyot achara Shabbat. Okay, if you have Yom Tov, which is after Shabbat, I remember we spoke about this, we just began, because coming up, we have Pesach this year, which is Chal liyot achara Shabbat. And that's one that gives everybody a cold sweats at night when they think about the fact that it's uh, Pesach is hard enough to get ready for, but the area of Pesach is on Shabbat, and how do we do that? And don't worry, we'll talk about it. It's okay. It's not as complicated as it seems. In, in fact, in many ways, it's actually easier when Erev Pesach is on Shabbat because your house is kasha and everything. You have to go out onto your balcony to eat your Lecha Mishnah, whatever. We'll talk about it. But in, in any case, but so you have a Yom Tov. It doesn't have to be Pesach. It can be Shavuot, Sukkot, whatever. But Chaliyot Achar Shabbat, so Yom Tov is, is on Motei Shabbat and Yom Rishon. So the question now is in terms of Tvila. We have a practice, certainly in the times of the Beit HaMikdash, right, that a person has to have a Damla Taher at small Baregel. person has to go to the Mikveh, also one, also oneself, and also one's uh, Kalim, which have to be ready for the, for the Yom Tov. So the question is, what do you do about Tvilat Adam and about Tvilat Kalim before, before uh, Yom Tov? Well, normally you do it on Erev Yom Tov. But it falls out on Shabbat. Now, I'll just mention again, when you say kalim, so our tendency is to think maybe of plates and pots and pans. That is one type of kalim. Kalim can also refer to clothes, can refer to cloth, can refer to all sorts of things. And over here, we're talking about tevilah from Tumat to Tara, not just the, the tevilah that we do nowadays when you buy utensils from an Anju, right? We're talking about uh, tevilah from, from, uh, from Tumat and Tara, which uh, doesn't apply nowadays. That's why it's less familiar, but that's uh, that's what we're dealing with. So, Chaliyot Achar Shabbat, Beit Shammai Omrim, Matbilinat HaKol Milifnei HaShabbat. Okay, when we say HaKol, we're referring to Adam and to Kalim. According to Beit Shammai, all the Tzvila has to be done before Shabbat. According to Beit Hillel, Beit Hillel Omrim, Kalim Milifnei HaShabbat, Ve'adam B'Shabbat. Now, Beit Hillel agrees that uh, Kalim, you have to do the tefillah before Shabbat. Okay, so Beit Hillel and Beit Shammai agree. And the Gemara is going to talk about this immediately. Everybody says that the Kalim, you cannot do the tefillah Kalim on Shabbat. That has to be done before Shabbat. However, Beit Hillel are lenient in that they say that Adam B'Shabbat, person can't over on Shabbat. So we'll see in the later on in the Gemara as to why exactly that is. And that is going to be a relevant sugya for today about why a person is allowed to still go, if a person is allowed to go to the mikvah on Shabbat. And this will have direct implications for the sugya of uh, washing oneself. Is one allowed to wash? Is one allowed to have a shower? Even on Yom Tov, for example. The command Shabbat, in uh, around about Tafmem, so it's called the Gzerat Merchatzaot, whereby one is not allowed to go, one is not allowed to go and wash oneself in hot water on Shabbat, even if the hot water was heated before Shabbat. Obviously, one is not allowed to heat water on Shabbat. That would be the Menachah of Bishul, right? Heating water. Um, Yom Tov is different. But uh, the, so the Gemara says it used to be that originally they had these uh, bathhouses, these merchatzaot, whereby the water was heated and was kept warm from Erev Shabbat. So people would come and uh, right, they'd come to the merchats and the bathhouse attendants would say, and they would say, when did you heat up the water? And they'd say, we heated the water on Erev Shabbat. And actually they were heating the water on Shabbat itself, which is a prohibition. So therefore, Chachamim made Gzerah, they said, even if the water was heated on Erev Shabbat, you can't go in, in hot water on Shabbat. What about in cold water? Is a person allowed to wash themselves in cold water on Shabbat and on Yom Tov? So that is going to be direct, that's going to be related to Asugya, which we will see a little bit further on in the, uh, a little bit further on in the Gemara. So, Beit El Anomrim Kelim Ilifnei Shabbat V'Adam B'Shabbat. Now, Shavin, they are equal. They they agree both Beit Hila and Beit Shammai about the following cases. We're going to discuss these more in the Gemara, but we'll just see. Uh, we'll just see what the Mishnah says. Case number one: It says Shavin Shemeshikin etamayim 
the clay even the tahara. In other words, you can bring water that is in a clay even in a stone vessel. You can we're dealing with the water that is tame, and you can do what's called hashaka in the water of the mikvah. Hashaka means if I take water that is that is uh, that is tame, and I place it in a clay, in a clay which is tahora, but I place it inside the mikvah. That that comes into that water, which is tamay, comes into contact. It's almost like it's planted inside the uh, tahor water of the mikvah. That water will then will then become tahor. So Beit Hira and Beit Shammai both agree that you're allowed to do this on Shabbat. On on Shabbat, yeah. Shavin shemeshikin tamayim b'kli even ataran. Aval lo matbilin, but lo matbilin. The difference is if you bring a kli with the kli itself is tahor, but the uh, but the uh, water inside. Is tamay, and I want to use that to uh, to make that water tahor. That's fine. That's allowed. But lomat bilin, meaning to take a kli which is tamay in the first place, and to toivo that kli, I, it would make it tahor. But you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to, to do that on Shabbat. And the Gemara will will we'll explain a little bit uh, why that is. Umat bilin migav legav umechavura lechavura. Okay. So here it says umat bilin migav legav. Rashi points out here something about the yom tov. And Yom Tov Migav Legav means if I have, uh, um, I want to toivel these kelim from one purpose, uh, one per one purpose to another, essentially. So uh, I have a kli which is which is already tahor. I I came along and was tamay and I put it in the mikveh before Yom Tov, and for the sake of let's say you wanted to use it to make uh, ol- to put in olives and to make olive oil, right? And then you decide actually no, you want to use it to make grapes with grapes and to make wine. Uh, either way, the kli is already tahor, so I don't have to, I don't have to toivel it specifically for the new purpose for which I want to use it. That's just a chumrah, and therefore, it, since it's already tahor, there's no issue of doing that on yom tov. Also, mechabura la chabura. The word chabura refers to the chabura is the group with which one eats the korban pesach, right? And you have uh, you have to be designated beforehand to a certain chabura. It has to be eaten in tahara. Everybody has to eat a person. Uh, you took the kli, you're going to use it for the korban pesach. You made a tahor to be used with uh, eating with chabura aleph, and now actually you want to go and eat with chabura bet. Again, it's already tahor; it doesn't need, doesn't require that to be like again. And therefore, if you did it, that would be that would be permitted on yom tov. There's no uh, there's no issue there. Again, Rashi tells us that the gemara will explain will explain further. Okay, so now we get onto the gemara. Again, we're at the bottom of the amud. Yudzayin amud bet. The gemara says, "The kule alma mihat kli b'shabbat lo." Okay. What comes out of our Mishnah is that we saw when we're dealing with a specific case, but the specific case in order to teach us the principle. And the case is where Shabbat uh, is Erev Yom Tov. And we said we saw Machloka between Beit Shammai and Beit whether Adam, whether a person can go and uh, toiv on the mikvah on that Shabbat. But everybody agreed, Beit Shammai and Beit Hela, that Kalim cannot. You cannot put Kalim in the mikvah on, on uh, Shabbat. So that's what the Gemara says. It's Kule Alma. Everybody agrees. Mihat, nonetheless, that Kli B'Shabbat, lo, that you cannot have a Kli on Shabbat. So why is that? My Tama. So the Gemara is going to give us, it's going to take about a daft to get there, but the Gemara is going to give us four different answers. Okay, we're going to spend a long time on the first one, and then we're going to go through the others, but four different answers as to the question of why you cannot have a Kli on Shabbat. So answer number one is, Amar Rabbah, and this is going to sound familiar to you all, and you'll see why in a moment. Amar Rabbah, Gezera, Shema, over the Amur, over the daft. Rabbi is concerned that if you, again, we're dealing with Shabbat, not with Yom Tov. We're concerned that if you come and you bring your Kli to the mikvah on Shabbat, what's going to happen? You're going to take it and you're going to carry it and you're going to carry it more than four Amot in Rishut Rabim. Obviously on Yom Tov, this is not a concern because on Yom Tov, there is no issue of carrying. But on Shabbat, there is. And we're worried that somebody's going to come to carry. So therefore, that's the Gzera, no um, no, uh, no carrying. Therefore, therefore, no tefillah of kelim. Interesting Tosfot, top of Daf Yud Chet. Tosfot at the top says Shema Yaverna Abamut Bereshut Rabim. He says Tema Amai Lo Kama Shema Yotzei Nimeshut Yachil Bereshut Rabim. We know the laws of carrying, right? There are two different uh, prohibitions when it comes to the Melacha of Hotzaah. You can transgress the Melacha of Hotzaah if you carry Arba Amot. In Rashut Rabim, but of course, if you go from Rashut Yachid to Rashut Rabim, or vice versa, you go from one domain to another, that is also carrying. So says Tosfur, why 
Is Rabbah concerned that I'm going to carry it in four Amot and Rishut Rabim, but he's not concerned I'm going to carry it from Rishut Yachit to Rishut Rabim and vice versa? And he says, Yes, Loma, She Shekera Bapetach or Begipofei Chatzer. He says, You've got something to remind you when you walk out of your house, right? So that's a, that's a Heker, you know, you're leaving the Rishut Yachit. When you're just walking in the Rishut Rabim, you're just walking, you know, nothing's necessarily going to remind you of the difference of where you're going. But as I said, this, uh, this Kzera of Rabbah, is very familiar to us. The reason is because Rabbi says this Gzera throughout Shas, right? You remember, Rabbi says, we don't blow the Shofar when Rosh Hashanah falls on Shabbat. We didn't have that this year. We had it last year. Right? Maybe thankfully we didn't have it this year. But um, but uh, he said, why is it you can't blow the Shofar on Shabbat? Because maybe somebody somewhere is going to go and is going to carry the Shofar Arba Amot Bereshut Rabim. We don't take Lulav when the first day of, of Sukkot is on Shabbat. Well, in fact, we don't take Lulav on, on, uh, on Shabbat at all. Right? Why? Because somebody might carry their lulav for him on the Shabbat Rabbim. Right? We don't read Kriyat Megillah if if uh, Purim falls out on Shabbat. So we, then we uh, bring the we bring the reading of the Megillah for to a different day because we don't want to carry the Megillah Abba Amot Shabbat Rabbim. Um, now this Kzeira again, which is which is Halakha Lamaisi and all those other cases. So the Puskim talk about this. There's a big discussion as to whether there is such a thing as Rishut HaRabim in our days or not. Right? We all know about the controversies about the Eruv, and uh, wh wh whichever city you come from, wherever you've been, there's probably had a controversy about its Eruv. You know, in London, there was a huge controversy a number of years ago. Manhattan has, has, has had its own, right? Uh, Israel's had, not, not, not exempt to this either. Um, there are a number of different issues that come up in terms of relying on the Eruv or not relying on the Eruv. But one of the most contentious issues is this. It relates to this idea that... The whole concept of Eruv is a Dindra Banan. We have to remember the, when we talk about Surat Petach, it's a Dindra Banan, an area which is called a Carmelit, which is not a Rishut Rabim from the Torah, but it's a Rishut Rabim Drabanan, you could say. And we have a principle of Hey Mamru, Hey Mamru. When the Rabbanan said something is forbidden, then they can come up with a way to make it Mutar. So Rabbanan said, in such an area, you can't carry unless you have a Machitzal de Surat Petach. So, therefore, according to nearly everybody, the, the whole concept of an Eruv only works if it's, the, if it's forbidden to carry mid Rabbanan in the first place. But if the area in question is a Rashut HaRabim, so that from the Torah, so then you can have the most Muhudar Eruv in the world, but it's meaningless because it's a, because it's a Rashut HaRabim from, from the Torah. Unless you have walls and you actually turn into a Rashut Yachid. So what defines whether something is Rashut HaRabim from the Torah or not? So we, we, we generally say that uh, the Gemara in Shabbat gives us certain, certain uh, criteria. Gemara well, Eruvin has a few as well. But the point is that it's similar to the Digle Midbar. That it's similar to just like when Bnei Israel were in the Midbar, you had the different camps. And, and, and that is how we determine uh, the similarity to what's nowadays Shut Yachin and Shut Rabim. So one of the things, as we all know, is that in the Midbar there were 600,000 uh, men, right? Let's put it that way. So you have you have the number of six hundred thousand. How far does the similarity go? Do we say that just like in the midbar there were six hundred thousand people, so to nowadays only if you have six hundred thousand people in an area that is considered rishon Rabin. So the Gemara does not mention this, but the rishonim mention it, and the rishonim say there are those rishonim who say uh, only if it's an area where six hundred thousand people pass. Some say pass every day. That it's a uh, that it's Rashut Rabim. And others say no, yeah, that, that that is not required. The beer, there's a long Bira Allah that talks about this. He brings, I think, 13 Rishonim who hold one way, and 13 Rishonim who hold the other way. He has an as a take or that's an absolute tie. And, and and it's a very contentious issue going through the generation. But essentially, those who say that you don't require the condition of six hundred thousand people passing through. Uh, for it to be a Rashut Rabim. So then it becomes much more stringent. Then we say any large area, any large city essentially becomes a Rashut Rabim, and the Eruv would become very, very problematic. There are other ways and there are other ways around it. But that is, and that is generally how uh, the Shulchan Aruch Paskins. The Ramah is a little bit more lenient on this. Normally, this comes at Soba Shir, no, we, we, we often see that uh, the Shulchan Aruch is uh, lenient and the, and the Ashkenazim are Machmer. Here it's actually the opposite way around. But uh, but uh, the Rama seems to follow this opinion to say that we require the condition of six hundred thousand people for a shutter abim, and therefore, uh, so long as you don't have six hundred thousand people passing through that area, it's not a major major thoroughfare. Um, then then it would not be a shutter abim from the Torah, and then the eruv would work. Okay, but one of the proofs 
One of the proofs of those who say that we don't require this condition that they bring for it is these Gemara, this Zerav Rabbah who says, we're worried that you're going to come and you're going to carry in Roshot Rabim. Because if you say, right, like those Rishonim who say, nowadays, we don't have anywhere where 600,000 people pass through. And therefore, nowadays, we don't have a Roshot Rabim. So then the Zerav Rabbah sounds ridiculous. He's saying, we're going to cancel Shofar. We're going to cancel Lulav. We're going to cancel Megillah. We're not going to let you bring your okay. Why? Why? Because somebody, some person somewhere is going to go and carry Roshot Rabim. But there's no such thing as Roshot Rabim. So how far-fetched do you have to go? Okay, that is one side. That is the argument. There are others who will say, is Rabbi, right, if you look at this, this, this Zera in depth and you try to understand, is Rabbi really concerned? Is he really concerned that there's one person somewhere, some idiot, excuse my language, but some idiot who wants to know, learn how to blow the shofar, so he's going to carry it. So because of him, the whole of Israel is not going to fulfill the mitzvah. Maybe there's something deeper here. Maybe he's trying to teach us something about the importance of Shabbat. Maybe there's something more beyond the Gzera. Okay. But in any event, that is uh, that discussion relates to, that, that is one of the proofs that relates to this question of how we define Rosh Hashanah in our days or not. In any event, but that's what we see. That, that is the Gzera. Rabbah says, Shema Yitlenu Be'adov Ya'verna Abamot B'Shut Rabim. Since we are concerned, we are concerned that somebody is going to carry their kalim and they're going to carry... Here, by the way, it's, it's much more, it's much easier, it's much more reasonable if we can say that to accept the Gzera of Rabbah than in the other places where we do accept it. Right? By Shofar, by Lulav, what you're saying is we're going to cancel. I mean, it's... it's, it's, it's it's uh, mind-blowing when you think about it. We're going to cancel a, a, a mitzvah de oraita because of a xerat rabbanan, because we're worried that somebody might do something. Yeah, there's no mitzvah that we're, ca- that we're canceling. Yeah, okay, you can do it. Toy for your kalim before Shabbos. Right, nothing happened. You can do it a few days earlier. Um, but that's what he says. Now, Amar Le'abaye, on the second line at the top of Tafiyot Chedam Anad. Amar Le'abaye. Yesh lo bo b'chatsero you, Rabbi, are saying that we cannot have this, uh, we cannot uh, toy with the Why? Because of Xerah, because you might come and carry in Roshut Rabim. Well, what if a person has the mikveh in their own property? And you have a bore, he has a, he has a uh, bore, he has a pit of water, which serves as a mikveh. It's in his chatser. Um Sorry, one moment, I'm just losing battery here. Let me plug this computer in. Okay, so he says, why, um, if you have the bore in your chatzeh, which is within the Rishut Yachid, so there, there's no concern that a person's going to go and come to, uh, to Rishut Rabim, right? What's the problem there? They, the Yogzerah should not apply. So he says, um, Amarle, Gzerah, Boba Chatzero, Atu Boba Rishut Rabim. We find this many times, we find this with many different. Uh, we're not going to now go and differentiate between every single case necessarily but he says it's a gzera to gzera he's saying yes the real gzera is because of where the mikveh is in the uh, Roshut Rabim but yeah we'll say gzera if, even if you have the mikveh in your property we're worried about that because if we allow it there then you might come to the Roshut Rabim and then you might come to uh, uh, and then you might come to carry okay so then he says Atenach Shabbat um, in other words, the implication here is that the gzera of not to uh, not to toivo uh, kelim applies not just on Shabbat but applies on Yom Tov as well. So he says, I understand why on Shabbat, but but it doesn't make sense on Yom Tov because on Yom Tov there is no melacha of So what's the problem there? So gazru uh, Yom Tov atu Shabbat. Okay, now here's where things start getting complicated. He says, we made a gzera of Yom Tov because of Shabbat. We made a gzera of Yom Tov because of Shabbat. Now, Tosfot here says, um, Tosfot says, gzera Yom Tov atu Shabbat, v'lo have a gzera li gzera, the Yom Tov v'shabbat achati. So says, this is not considered a gzera li gzera because we consider Shabbat and Yom Tov as one and the same. But seemingly, the Peshat of the Gemara does not, does not seem to accept that. Um, right, the question is this. We have a principle the, the, the implied question. The Quran doesn't say it explicitly, but this is what it's asking. We have a principle. We say, Ein guzrin gzera li gzera. Whenever we have a gzera de Rabbanan, it's Rabbanan said, don't do X, because if you do X, you might come to do Y. Y is in Esau Torah. 
So the Rabbanan can come and make a Zeira to prevent me from violating a Torah. The Rabbanan can come and make a Zeira to prevent me from violating a Torah obligation. But the Rabbanan do not make a Zeira to prevent me from uh, from uh, transgressing another Zeira. Right? If I say, if Rabbanan say, don't do A, which is the Rabbanan, because if you do A, you might do B, which is also an Isol the Rabbanan, because if you do B, you might come to do C, which is an Isol the Rabbanan. We don't, do, we don't go so far. That's Xerah and Xera. There are certain exceptions. Sometimes you say something which is very, very likely or very, very severe. But every time we have, then the Gemara will ask and say, what about Xerah and Xerah? And, and then we'll say. So, so, so here, the question is this. We're saying, you can't toy for your Kedim on Yom Tov. Why? Because if you toy for your Kedim on Yom Tov, you might toy for your Kedim on Shabbat. What's the problem if you toy for your Kedim on Shabbat? If you toy for your Kedim on Shabbat, then you might come to carry them on Shabbat. So that would be a Xerah and Xerah. So Tosfot is preempting the question. And Tosfot is saying that many times we, we look at Shabbat and Yom Tov together. You can't do something on Shabbat. You can't do it on Yom Tov. It's, it's the same. It's not a separate Xerah. But... The Gemara does seem to question, say, no, no, not necessarily, not necessarily. So the question here is why would, uh, um, meaning the, the implication at this point is, sorry, the, the Gemara really comes from the other end, which is that we, for now, let's say we accept Rabba's reasoning. If we accept Rabba's reasoning that you can't toggle because you might come to carry, well, if you might come to carry, then what's the problem on Yom Tov? Well, on Yom Tov, you might come to do it on Shabbat. Or on Shabbat, you might come to carry. I.e., there is a Gzera, a Gzera. So now the question is going to follow. Us. So we're asking Mika and is it true? If it's correct that in this realm, in this area of Tvilat Kelim, on Shabbat and Yom Tov, that we say Gzera, a Gzera, we're going to look at a number of other cases. And we're going to say in those cases, also you should say Gzera, a Gzera. If you're saying this is something where the concern is so, uh, is so severe, so then that would be the case there as well. But if we don't say it anywhere, then we're going to have to uh, reevaluate whether Rabbah's reasoning is correct. Okay, so that's what the Gemara is now going through. So the Gemara now says, Umi Gazrinan, is it really true that we would be uh, would, would make such a Gzera? Um, right, have a look at Rashi. Rashi right near the top. He says, Mi Gazrinan, Mi Achmur Rabbanan Kulei Hai, were the Rabbanan so machmir in this er area of Halakha, regarding this specific issue of Tfilat Kelim, is it true that regarding this, Rabbanan came along and made a Gzera li Gzera? Because if they did, you're going to have to say the following. Um, v'hatnan. Okay, the fifth line of the Gemara. V'hatnan. V'shavin shemeshikin et ha'mayim Okay, that was the case in our Mishnah. That was the case in our Mishnah, which where we said you can Beit Shama and Beit Hillel both agree. You can bring a kli tahor with water inside, which is tamay, and you can bring that into the mikvah to do ashaka, but you cannot bring a kli tamay and bring that into the mikvah. Right? In other words, so we say ashaka is allowed, but hatbala is not allowed. The e ita, if it's true, what's true? If it's true that we say gzera li gzera regarding hatbala and yom tov. Okay, nigzo ashaka to atbala. If we're so concerned, yeah, then we should really say we should say the same thing. We should say that you cannot come and do this hashaka of the water even in a kli tahor because we're worried that if you come and you bring a kli tahor, then you might come and bring a kli tame, and that's going that's going to be a, a, an issue. So 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 right, you see, it's not the same. It's not the same concern. It's not to do with Chilul Shabbat, it's not to do with carrying, to, but the point is, if we understand that, that in this realm of Tvilat Kelim and Yom Tov, we are, we are very concerned about doing things wrong, and it's so likely that we're going to do, that we're going to add a Gzera and a Gzera. So then just as you want to add a Gzera and a Gzera of Yom Tov and Shabbat, you should have a Gzera and a Gzera of Hatbalah and Ashoka. That's the Gemara's argument. Now, the answer to that is, well, no, you've, you've misunderstood the case. It says, Vatisbara, can you really think that? Why? E it lay my miafim hani lamali la me badlu ashaka. We have to ask why would a person be doing ashaka in the mikvah in the first place? Why would a person be coming on Yom Tov and bringing this maim to me and putting it doing ashaka in the mikvah to make them tahor? It must be because he doesn't have any other water. If he's got other water which it, which are uh, is uh, which, uh, right, the water which is which is tahor. Right, he has my miyafim, then he doesn't need to do ashaka. The only reason we've been doing ashaka is because that's the only water you have. That's what the Gemara is saying. So, 
If he has money of him, why would he be doing that with us? But you have to say that he doesn't have. Okay. Since he has now, since he's the only uh, watch that he has, he's going to be exceedingly careful. He's going to be careful that he's not going to get anything. etc. Rashi says, yeah, that they won't become Tamei. Since he's very, very uh, careful, the fact that water is, that is going to become uh, Tamei, this is something which is unlikely. It's an unlikely scenario. And another principle that we have when it comes to Gzerot of Chazal is that Chazal did not make Gzerot when it comes to unlikely scenarios. Okay, so that rejects the proof of, uh, of, uh, of, of, of case number one. Okay, so I think we'll stop there today. Essentially, what, what we're saying, just to, get, just to recap, in terms of the, the flow and the Shakl and the Tari of where we are in the Gemara, we said, we started off with the Mishnah. The Mishnah said, Beit Shammai and Beit Hillel, have a certain machloket, but they agree that you cannot do tvilat kalim on Yom Tov, uh, on Shabbat. Uh, we understand that to mean on, on Yom Tov as well. So the question was, why can we not do tvilat kalim on Shabbat? We said the Quran is going to suggest four answers, but right now we're just dealing with the first one. The first answer is of Rabbah. Rabbah says you cannot do tvilat kalim on, on, on Shabbat because you might come to carry Arba Amot Bereshut Rabin. Okay. You might come to carry Arba Amot Bereshut Rabim. So that I understand on Shabbat. What about on Yom Tov? So we said that uh, we, we, it's a Gzera, Yom Tov Atu Shabbat. So what comes out of that is that if we accept Rabbah's answer, it means that when it comes to Tefillat Kalim, Rabbanan did make a Gzera like Gzera. If Rabbanan did make a Gzera like Gzera, why don't we say, ah, when it comes to Hashaka and Atbala, that there's a Gzera like Gzera? Answer because that's a case that is unlikely and therefore that, is, that, that does not reject the proof one way or the other. Okay, we'll pick it up tomorrow. We'll, as the Gemara has a number of other cases where it's going to ask a similar question, and from there we'll move on to the other Teratim, uh, zoom out again in terms of why it is that we can't uh, do uh, Tfilat Kelim on, on, uh, on Shabbat, and from there we'll get on to the question of Tfilat Adam as well. Okay, everybody, Thank you. Good to start up. Thank you.